So hello, good day. So as part of our uh, microbiology part of our MTAP, as your review, we are going to talk about gram-negative enteric bacilli for this session. So once again, I am your Sir JM to talk about this, um, your instructor for this um, medtech assessment program. So for the objectives of our session today, we will state the general, general characteristics of the enterobacteria shea. We will describe the general characteristics of each individual organisms. So in this uh, lecture topic, I, I just included the, the ones that are most common, uh, most common um, members of this uh, family. And then describe their antigenic structure of each individual organisms. And then enumerate the determinants of pathogenicity of each organism. We will also discuss the clinical illnesses produced by each individual organism and the methods of diagnosis for each individual organism in which this should be your focus. So we will also discuss the methods of treatment for each organism. So in your entire bacteria, Shea, uh, they are gram negative and mostly they are free living bacteria. And then you now have your a gram negative which is divided into uh, your cocci your non enteric rods and then your enteric rods and your enteric rods mainly composes of your campylobacter enterobacter escherichia helicobacter klebsiella mm -hmm. proteus providentia salmonella sriracha shigella vibrio and yersinia but then um our main focus for this afternoon would be the ones that are or that the ones that inhabit your intestines so your entire bacteria shea, uh, this is adapted from Zinser. So you have here your Escherichia, Enterobacter, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia, Serasha, Citrobacter, and your Proteus. So for the entire bacteria shea, as a review, you know, they can be found in soil because some of us humans like to defecate in, in the soil. So that's the reason why the transfer of the bacteria from the, our intestines, uh, we can now see them in soil. So they can be found in soil, water, decaying matter, and the large intestines of humans and animals. They can also be found in insects. So they are referred to as enteric bacilli because of their normal habitat in humans, which is um, our enteric system or our gastrointestinal tract. So the, they are described to be small, gram-negative, facultative. Again, what do, we, what do you mean when you say facultative? Okay, review, reviewin nyo yung term na yun, okay? So they are non-spore-forming rods. And then, they are most, most of them are opportunistic and can infect anybody side in an altered host. And uh, basically, that happens if uh, part of, or a part of our normal flora or they usually inhabit the small intestine if they are removed from our small intestine or in our intestines and then they they will go now to other parts of the body like the eyes or or our mouth so they will infect that um, particular organ because they are not natural inhabitants of that um, particular part of our body they are also responsible for the majority of nosocomial infections when you say nosocomial they are hospital acquired so they are they can be destroyed easily by heat and by low concentrations of germicides and disinfectants that's why uh, a primary a primary mode of your disinfection or yes disinfection of water in order for it to become um, drinkable or potable is to boil them and then they can survive in snow and ice for several months for the antigenic structures, majority of them can possess the capsular antigen or our K antigen, which is made up of polysaccharide, your flagellar, flagellar antigen or our H antigen, which is used as a basis of antigenic typing like your salmonella, and then your somatic antigen or your O antigen, which enhances the establishment of your organism in the host. So for the determinants of their pathogenicity, they can have endotoxins okay so what do you mean by endotoxin an endotoxin is your lipid a okay which is a piece of the outer membrane of like outer membrane lipopolysaccharide of gram negative bacteria so your lipid a or endotoxin is very toxic and is released when the bacterial cell undergoes lysis by this or destruction that's why it's called endotoxin because you need to lyse the bacteria in order for the toxin to be to take effect and then the endotoxin is also 
shed in steady amounts from the living bacteria. So that happens by a flux pumps. So your endotoxins contribute to high mortality in 90% of the patients with gram-negative bacteremia due to endotoxic shock. And the pooling of blood in, in the microcirculation which causes uh, cellular hypoxia and metabolic failure due to inadequacy of your blood in vital organs. So your enteric organisms mainly affect these um, organs and then especially these organs if they will now cause septic shock because your enteric bacteria she commonly causes your septic shock because of their ability to, to their pathogenicity or their propensity to invade the bloodstream. So once they reach the bloodstream, they can cause a uh, effects on your vascular system or blood vessels which causes vasodilation and if you if you vasodilate there will be decreased blood pressure and then organ hypoperfusion so what happens if there is organ hypoperfusion ischemia leading to necrosis and then for the heart it can cause myocardial depression and then if you have a depressed myocardium there will be decreased cardiac output so what happens if you have decreased cardiac output there will be no enough blood supply to your vital organs let alone the heart and then there will be decreased blood pressure so hypotension and then organ hypoperfusion in your kidneys there will be acute renal failure in which you will have a decreased urine output, a volume overload, and then the accumulation of toxins. Remember that your kidneys uh, will be the one responsible to clean the bloodstream. But then, if it is infected, it will not um, do its function. Back at my volume overload, because once your kidney fails, um, the your urine output or its ability to secrete uh, water will be defective that's why you retain so much water and then you have a decreased urine output in the lungs you will have adult respiratory distress syndrome causing now your hypoxia and then your liver hepatic failure accumulation of metabolic toxins and hepatic encephalopathy in your brain you will have encephalopathy uh, once that your brain is affected you will have you will have a meningitis or whatsoever and then if of course your brain is used for thinking you will have an altered mental status uh, it will also affect your coagulation system in which this this disseminated intervascular coagulation may take effect. So if you have the IC, you will have a hypercoagulable state in which you will cause a clotting as well as bleeding at the same time. Okay, that is the, the effects of your um endotoxin now let's talk about your enterotoxins your enterotoxins they cause a transduction of fluid into the lumen of the small intestine with subsequent diarrhea so the effect of your enterotoxin is mainly osmotic okay because of its effect on fluid retention in the small intestines remember that your your water is absorbed in your intestines specifically on the large intestine but there's also a portion of your water which is reabsorbed back in your small intestine so if this if the water is not reabsorbed back into the body it will cause diarrhea that's why your diarrhea is a fluid basically a fluid stool and then your shiga toxin and your shiga like toxins or what we call as your vero toxins vero because its effect on the vero tissue cells of your african green monkeys so your shigella produces a toxin that interferes with protein synthesis and your vero toxin producing e coli or your vtec causes now your hemolytic diarrhea or hemolytic uremic syndrome or hus your con colonization factors, you have here your capsule, which is antiphagocytic. So remember that always, if your organism or microorganism has a capsule, they have the ability to, to resist phagocytosis. So what are those? And you can also note for the presence of a capsule in a bacteria if their colonies will be mucoid, which is very apparent in your Klebsiella. So you have here your fimbri or your pili and it is used for attachment. Not only for attachment, okay, because your fimbri or your pili has two forms. You have your sex pili and your uh, attachment pili. So your sex pili is used for conjugation or the passing of your, of your genetic material from one organism to the other, like your plasmids. Okay, now let's go to the specific organisms. The first one, and probably the most common, 
member of your Enterobacteria Shea is your Escherichia coli. So your Escherichia coli is described to be a facultative inhabitant of your large intestine and it's just it is responsible for virtually all the clinically significant infections caused by the genus. And a part of the normal flora, but can be pathogenic both within and outside the gastrointestinal tract. For their biochemical reaction, it is known to be a lactose fermenter as well as a glucose fermenter. It produces both acid and gas during fermentation of carbohydrates. That's why in your TSI later on, once you see gas production, always suspect the presence of Escherichia coli. It reduces nitrates to nitrites to produce energy. That's why in your urinalysis, once you have a positive nitrite reaction, always suspect for this organism. The lack of cytochrome oxidase, so they are, that is, they are oxidase negative. Again, review what is your reagent used in your oxidase test. Remember that one, okay? Because that oxidase test will set apart your Escherichia coli from your Pseudomonas, which is oxidase positive. Okay, so this is a picture of your E. coli, O157H7. Okay, this is the one of the most virulent strain of your E. coli. Okay, so for the antigenic structure of your E. coli, serologic typing is based on O antigen. Again, what is your O antigen? And H antigen. Again, what is H antigen? And when applicable, the K antigen. So your antigenic profile is useful for epidemiologic studies. That's why they are... That's why in here, we have here your O157H7, which produces your Shiga-like toxin, causing your HUS and your hemorrhagic colitis, and then your O78H11, which are enterotoxigenic. Um, this one, this is strains, um, they must be documented, okay, because of their incidence that is becoming more apparent. And sad to say, this strain, your 0157H7, they are the most um, pathogenic among all the strains of your uh, E. coli. So, for the determinants of pathogenicity, um, again, we have your polysialic acid capsule K1, which enables the organism to resist killing by neutrophils. It aids in the survival of the organism in the blood and CSF, and the organism possesses this, are more likely to cause neonatal sepsis. Remember that your... That in your body fluids, like in your CSF, there are um, resident macrophages, diba? What do you call the macrophages in your CSF or in your central nervous system? So, those uh, macrophages will not be able to do their function because of their poly because of the polysialic acid capsule K1 of your E. coli. That's why in, in babies, they will usually have neonatal sepsis. Because number one, they have the press immune system, and then number two, if an if an E. coli possesses this um, polysialic acid capsule, it will uh, resist the patho uh, phagocytosis of the organism. So we also have here your S. fimbriae, or it has a predilection for binding to vascular endothelium and ventricles in the brain. And the other fimbrase, which will cause now to, for them to bind to other host tissues. In your enterotoxins, enterotoxins, it can be subdivided into two. Okay, we have here your heat lava and here your heat stable. And your enterotoxins, it has a target organ, which is your small intestine. Your heat lava enterotoxin, what does it do? It will stimulate the, your adenylyl cyclic. Adenyl cyclase in the mucosa, which increases permeability, resulting in fluid loss and your electrolytes as well. And then your heat stable naman, it will activate the guanylate cyclase in the mucosa, inhibiting sodium and chloride reabsorption. Okay, um, your adenyl, cy adenyl cyclase and your guanylate cyclase, these are part of your G-protein binding, G, G binding protein um, transmembrane uh, proteins in which they are responsible for a lot of processes including your 
uh, cell transport. Remember that your cell membrane is a lipid bilayer and it is described to be as a selective, diba? But once that your adenyl cyclase and guanylate cyclase are activated, it has now the ability or the cell now has the ability to to have an increased permeability. That's why the 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 fluids in our small intestine will be uh, discarded and not retained. As well as if you activate your guanylate cyclase in the mucosa of your small intestines, remember that we still need to reabsorb your sodium and chloride because they are the main electrolytes in our body, diba. Right? But once your guanylate cyclase is activated, it will now inhibit your sodium and chloride reabsorption. So try to picture try to picture that out because that explains why why we have some fluid disturbances or bakit kayo umiinom ng mga pegelite, mga ganun kapag nagkakaroon kayo ng diarrhea because you need to replenish yung mga nalolos nyong sodium and chloride and the loss of your electrolytes are mainly in, mainly attributed to your enterotoxins which are heat labile and heat stable. And then we also have here your verotoxins or your shiga-like toxins, your VTEC. So this is also associated in diarrhea, hemorrhagic colitis, and your hemolytic uremic syndrome. Okay, um, you might be asking, Sir, ano nga ba kasi itong HUS? Palagi ko itong nakikita. Well, your HUS or your hemolytic uremic syndrome is described to be has a triad, okay? Yun na lang yung clue. Has a triad in which it you your patient will present with um, uremia or the buildup of toxins in your blood, um, hemolytic anemia, as well as your thrombocytopenia. So, yun yung triad ng hemolytic uremic syndrome. And then, kung dadagdagan mo pa ng, ng fever and uh, neurologic symptoms, yun na yung manifestations naman ng uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. But then again, your HUS, ayun nga, the triad of your HUS is your hemolytic anemia, uremia, and your uh, thrombocytopenia. And, okay. So for the clinical significance of your intestinal disease, um, the transmission of your intestinal disease is commonly by fecal oral route and with contaminated food but, and water serving as your vehicles. Um, there are at least five types of your, in, your, your E. coli infection that has that differ in pathogenic mechanisms. So you have here your ETEC, EPEC, EHEC, AEC, and your AEC. So your enterotoxigenic, enteropathogenic, enterohemorrhagic, enteroinvasive, enteroaggregative, enter E. coli. They are all basically the same organism, but they only differ in the acquisition of specific pathogenic traits. So now let's go first to your um, ETEC. Ito yung mga palagi nilang paboritong tinatanong because ito yung mga variants ng, ng clinical manifestation ng E. coli, e. coli um, infection. So your enterotoxigenic Escherichia coli is the most common cause of your traveler's diarrhea. So the transmission is via food and water and contaminated with human waste or by person-to-person person, person person contact. So your ETEC colonize the small intestine in which uh, the pili facilitate the binding of the organism to the intestinal mucosa. So that's why uh, the reason why it is called enterotoxigenic because of its enterotoxins, diba? And then your enterotoxins cause prolonged hypersecretion of chloride ions and water by intestinal um, mucosal cells. That's why a while ago, I've talked about the activation of your adenyl cyclase and your guanylate cyclase because of their ability or inability once activated to reabsorb back your electrolytes. So in your enterotoxins, it causes prolonged hypersecretion of chloride ions, water by intestinal mucosal cells while inhibiting the reabsorption of your sodium. The gut becomes full of fluid resulting in significant watery diarrhea that continues over a period of several days. In your heat stable toxin or your ST, stable, that's why it's called ST, uh, causes an elevation in cellular CGMP or, or, or cyclic guanosine monophosphate levels and your heat label toxin which causes elevated uh, CAMP or cyclic adenyl, cyclic um, 
cyclic adenyl monophosphate. Your label toxin or LT is essentially identical to the cholera toxin. That's why what happens also in cholera, diba, you, all, you will also have here, here your fluid loss. But the manifestations of your enterotoxin as compared to your cholera, your cholera is more pathogenic and more invasive in nature. So, ito pala, may nalagay pala akong picture dito. So, as you can see here, once your label toxin binds to the receptor, yan dumikit siya dun sa, sa mucosa ng, ito yung cell ah, ito yung cell natin. This is your intestinal cell. Okay? So, remember, marami kang ganyan. So, yan yung intestinal cell mo. And then, this is your lumen. Yung lumen is the butas. Okay, so yan yung butas na part. So once na nagproduce ng label toxin yung E. coli natin, it will go to the to the receptors and then once it once na hanap niya yung receptor, it will activate now your adenylate cyclase. Your adenylate cyclase is an enzyme which will convert now your ATP into CAMP. That's why it's called adenylate cyclase kasi mag magre-remove ka ngayon ng adenyl uh, group. So, your adenylate cyclase produces elevated levels of your CAMP. And then, if there are elevated levels of your CAMP, it will activate another receptor here, which will open up, or yung mga transmembrane or your integral proteins, they will open up, or yung mga channels ninyo, they will open up, and then, which will now release your ions, like your bicarbonate, sodium, or hydro... Ano, ano ulit? Hindi ko na nakita. Potassium, sodium, chloride, and your water. Okay, so that's the mechanism in which your enterotoxigenic causes now your traveler's diarrhea or a very watery uh, diarrhea. Your enteropathogenic Escherichia coli or your EPEC, which, the, which is the main cause of diarrhea in infants, especially in locations with poor sanitation. So your newborn becomes infected perinatally. There is destruction of the microvilli in the small intestine. Uh, your EPEC uh, are not invasive and does not cause bloody diarrhea. Remember that one because that is their main difference from one another. So your EPEC does not cause bloody diarrhea. The toxins are not elaborated by EPEC trains and watery diarrhea results which on rare occasions may be chronic your enterohemorrhagic from the name itself since my hemorrhage jan there is production of blood so your enterohemorrhagic e coli it binds to cells in large intestine and produce attaching and effacing lesions that's why it's it's bloody because of the lesions produced so they produce exotoxins, your shiga-like toxins 1 or 2, which results in severe copious bloody diarrhea or your hemorrhagic colitis. The serotype responsible for this one is your O157H7. That's why it's, it's the most pathogenic because it causes your bloody stool. The strain is associated with outbreaks of hemolytic uremic syndrome or your HUS which is characterized by fever, acute renal failure, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and your thrombocytopenia in ch children younger than 5 than ages 5 to 10 years. The primary reservoir of your EHEC is cattle or or cows and responsive the possibility of infection can be decreased by thoroughly cooking ground beef and your pasteurized milk. Okay, so now let's go to your entero-invasive. The entero-invasive naman is your dysentery-like, okay? It causes a dysentery-like syndrome with fever and bloody stools. It has plasmid and coded virulence factors identical to those of Shigella species which allow the invasion of your epithelial cells and intracellular spread by the use of their actin-based motility. Your entero-invasive E. coli strains produce your uh, hemolysin A. Your enteroaggregative E. coli, the adherence is to the small intestine is mediated by aggregative adherence fem fimbriae. They are the adherent rods resemble stacked bricks and result in shortening of the microvilli. Your enteroaggregative E. coli strains produce a heat-stable toxin that is plasmid-encoded and they also cause traveler's diarrhea but they, these are not as common as your enterotoxigenic. And they are persistent, they also cause persistent watery diarrhea in children and patients infected with HIV. Take away nyo dito, 
patients with HIV. Okay, because your enteroaggregative, kapag may nakita ngayong question, basta E. coli, that will cause uh, diarrhea in in immunocompromised patients, automatic enteroaggregative E. coli na yun. Okay, so this is a summary of the, of the strains of E. coli, their syndromes that they cause, and the therapy that can also be useful. So your ETEC will cause uh, watery diarrhea or traveler's diarrhea, um, enteropathogenic, um, e. coli, so the, the, that is the manifestations. Uh, may naalala lang ako, ano pala yung other term for traveler's diarrhea? It is your Montezuma's Revenge. Okay? So, again, just take a look at this table if you just familiarize yourself. Ayan. So, Uh, yung takeaway nyo dito, enterotoxigenic, traveler's diarrhea, pathogenic, um, enteropathogenic, watery diarrhea, most commonly in infants, enterohemorrhagic, bloody, and HUS, enteroinvasive, bloody diarrhea, uh, pero yung difference nila, hindi siya nagkakos ng hemolytic uremic syndrome. And then yung enteroaggregative, HIV, or immunocompromised patients. Okay, so those are your... Um, Therapy or modalities. Uh, as you can see here, antibiotics is only applicable to your terotoxigenic and pathogenic. And then most of them or all of them actually will actually need rehydration and electrolyte correction. Kasi nga, their manifestations are the removal of your ions or your electrolytes. So clinical significance, let's move to your extra-intestinal disease. So as I have said, aside from the uh, gut or our... Uh, gastrointestinal tract, they can also cause diseases outside the gastrointestinal tract. So, you have here your UTI, which is the most common um, site or your your urinary system is the most common site in which your enterobacteria she will uh, infect because it's the closest to it, diba. So, your urinary tract infection, the E. coli, is the leading cause of both nosocomial and community-acquired UTI, including cystitis and pyelonephritis. Cystitis, infection of the bladder, pyelonephritis is infection of your kidneys. Women are particularly at risk for the infection mainly because of structural um, structural reasons and also hygiene. Your neonatal meningitis, E. coli, is a major cause of this disease occurring uh, within the first month of life. Your K1 or capsular antigen is particularly associated with such infections. Remember the poly... Yung poly, poly, poly na sinabi ko kanina doon. The nasocomial pneumonia, which uh, most patients are 50 years old with the chronic disease, like your klebsiala pneumonia, and even E. coli can also cause pneumonia. Your gram-negative sepsis and, and the toxic shock, your E. coli is the most frequent cause. As well as your peritonitis or ruptured viscous. When you say peritonitis, what is the peritoneum? The peritoneum is your, the 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 covering of your your of your uh, GI tract or your abdomen so if if there is a ruptured or perforated uh, colon or small intestine it will infect your peritoneum and cause peritonitis so for the diagnosis this is our main focus so your gram stain reaction of course that's the first thing that you will do if you receive a specimen which is which is for the work which is uh, for work up for enterobacteria or anything actually an organism you will always do your gram stain so your gram stain they are described to be gram negative short rods number 1 agar that will that you will use is your or your primary agar that you will use is your macon key so your macon key we it will determine the lactose fermenters from the non-lactose fermenters. So your lactose fermenters will yield a colored colony, which is in pink to brick red. And then the non-lactose fermenters produce colorless colonies. Remember that, ah, colorless siya, hindi siya white. Kasi most commonly, kapag tinanong nila kayo later on, yung sasagot nyo ay white. Kasi nga, white naman talaga yung nakikita mo. But book-based, they are described to be colorless. You have here your EMB, which is 
very pa- very specific to your E. coli. Your eucin methylene blue, uh, which will also differentiate lactose fermenters from non-lactose fermenters. But if you will see a greenish metallic sheen, that is always your E. coli. Your triple sugar iron, so this one, you will have a slant and a butt. So for the different, they will differentiate enteric bacteria and they has glucose, lactose, and sucrose, and your phenol red as an indicator. Okay, as a review, what is the concentration or the composition of the sugars in your TSI? So the correct answer is 1% uh Lactose, 1% sucrose, and 0.1% glucose. Okay? So, the lactose fermenters, which is your cleanse or your Klebsiella, Enterobacteriaceae, and E. coli, they will produce an acid slant and butt. So, A over A, yung reaction nila with gas formation. Or, um, ayun na, kita nyo dito. Gas formation. So, that is your E. coli. So, possible reactions in this one would be but A over A if you will have an acid slant and acid butt. A over K if you will have an acid slant or acid slant and an alkaline butt. So, this one right here, how do you interpret this? This is considered to be as K over A. Okay, because red yung slant niya. And then yellowish yung butt. So that means that there is or glucose was fermented in this part. Because this slant, the, composi the composition of your slant is your lactose and sucrose. So if you see a yellow slant, that means merong lactose fermentation na nangyayari dun. And almost always, kapag nag-yellow yung slant mo, always suspect for the tree your E. coli, Enterobacter, and your Klebsiella. So as you can see here, my blackening tong medium natin, which is uh, somewhat specific for Salmonella, which indicates ano yung napuproduce kapag may blackening, your H2S or your hydrogen sulfide. Another test that is very Valuable in different, differentiating your Enterobacter Shea family is your Invic reaction or Indole, Methyl Red, Vokes, Proskauer, and your Citrate test. Um, your Indole, it will identify organisms that can digest tryptophan to Indole. Again, what is the, rea the reagent that we used for Indole test? It is your Covax reagent. And the positive reaction is a red ring formation. Methyl Red test, which will identify organisms that degrade uh, glucose to acid so a positive result will yield red color okay mali dito sa mga color reactions ah so positive for e coli and negative for enterobacter a uh, vogue's proskauer test it will identify organisms that digest glucose to acetyl methyl carbinol and to differentiate them between the species so kapag pink it will produce uh, or pink to red that is specific for your enterobacter and kapag negative, yellow which is specific for your E. coli. Citrate utilization test, the ability of the organisms to utilize citrate as a source of carbon. Okay? Carbon as their um, main nutrient source. So when this occurs, the pH increases. So that means magiging alkaline siya. And the indicator turns blue in color. So, kapag blue, enterobacter or klebsiella. And green, or it will retain its normal color or original original color that is specific for your E. coli. So, invic test for E. coli, plus, plus, minus, minus. Or positive, positive, negative, negative. Balik tarin mo lang yan, negative, negative, plus, plus. That will be specific naman for your enterobacter and your klebsiella. So, the difference, so the... Problem now is how will you differentiate your Enterobacter and your Klebsiella? Okay, so that is your uh, common Invic reactions for your organism. We have here your E. coli, plus, plus, minus, minus, or positive, positive, negative, negative, uh, Shigella and Salmonella. Um, ayan, so just read on the table.
So your E. coli, it causes your UTI, your local or systemic disease, and then meningitis. So the mode of treatment for E. coli is mainly antibiotics. So if you if it causes UTI, you will have your ciprofloxacin and trimetoprim sulfamethoxazole or your cotrimoxazole na tinatawag natin. For local or systemic disease, uh, we usually give um, empiric therapy. But then, if we try to employ empiric therapy, there's also a need for culture and sensitivity for us to step down. Kasi when we say empiric therapy, parang blind, parang yung best guess, kumbaga. Best guess na, na medicine. Maybe it will work, maybe it won't. So kapag it won't work, or maybe it will work, we still need the result of the culture and sensitivity in order for us to know the specific antibiotic to give. So we can give ampicillin, cefotaxime. Ampicillin is a penicillin, member of the penicillin family, or cefotaxime is member of your cephalosporin, minoglycoside, ciprofloxacin, and your uh, trimetoprim sulfamethoxazole. And then if it is meningitis, we can use your cefotaxime because your cefotaxime will cross your blood-brain barrier. For Okay, so that's it for your E. coli. So for your Klebsiella pneumoniae, it is known as your, also known as your Fried, fried Landers bacillus. So it is described to be a gram-negative rod, which is a normal inhabitant of your GIT and also a lactose-fermenting, non motile encapsulated organism. Always remember this one. This is one of its characteristics, encapsulated, because it will always have a mucoid colony later kapag titingnan niyo siya sa petri dish. When say mucoid very sticky. Kapag yung tipong iaangat mo siya para siya yung pizza sa ano, pizza sa pizza hut na maraming cheese. And then your it has O and K antigens. Your K antigen is used for serologic typing since there are 77 K antigens and then it is opportunistic and can infect the respiratory tract and other sites. So this is your Klebsiella pneumoniae. The determinants of pathogenicity of your Klebsiella is mainly because of its large capsule because it is antiphagocytic and then um, they are more virulent. It, it also has an, an endotoxin, enterotoxin producing strains which is isolated from patients with tropical sprue. The clinical significance of your Klebsiella um, the primary community acquired pneumonia in immunocompromised patients. It will also cause your nosocomial pneumonia in elderly with underlying medical problems like your diabetes mellitus, alcoholism, bronchopulmonary problems. So it the, the, the sputum produced from these patients with Klebsiella pneumonia infection is a non thick, non-putrid blood sputum which is the currant jelly sputum. It causes your necrotizing, consolidation, and abscess formation, UTI wound infection, bacteremia, and meningitis. So it is considered to be one of the top 10 bacterial infection producing uh, hospitally acquired infections. Number one palagi dyan si Sodomonas. So that is, this, that is your curant jelly sputum. Para siyang, hindi ko alam, curant jelly. Wow. So the diagnosis for your Klebsiella, um, your gram stain reaction, of course, gram negative, uh, presence of large capsule is suggestive of Klebsiella. And you can, again, I'm reiterating, you can always suspect for an organism to be encapsulated if it has a thick um, or mucoid colonies. So for the blood culture, urine, pus, spinal fluid, and sputum for culture. Um, primary isolation media natin, blood agar plate, and your Macon key. The TSI reaction is an acid-acid with gas production, negative H2S or hydrogen sulfide. So, A over A, which is yellow over yellow, plus gas. And then your Imvic reaction, it can be negative-negative, positive-positive, or negative-positive, negative-positive. So, this is your Klebsiella pneumoniae on Macon Ki Agar and TSI reaction. EMB reaction, um, that's why EMB is very good to different to use if you want to differentiate E. coli from the other or Klebsiella and your Enterobacter if it will not produce a greenish metallic sheen. So as you can see here, the colonies are described to have good growth of brown, dark-centered mucoid colonies, smaller than Enterobacter. So black siya 
or brown. Hindi siya greenish metallic sheen. So treatment, third gen cephalosporins, aminoglycosides, fluoroquinolones, and they may produce beta-lactamases which will inactivate your ampicillin and carbonicillin but not cephalosporins. That's why the primary treatment or antibiotic for Klebsiella is third gen ceph because uh, most Klebsiellas are beta-lactamase producers. So ano ba ginagawa ng beta-lactamase? Diba? Sinisira niya kasi yung beta-lactang rim. beta-lactam ring ng antibiotic. Hence, kapag nasira yung beta-lactam ring, it will inactivate the antibiotic itself. Um, one thing to take note on Klebsiella is the different species. Okay, so we have here your Klebsiella pneumoniae, Klebsiella oxytoca, Klebsiella ozonae. So, Takeaway nyo doon is si Klebsiella oxytoca. It is the only Klebsiella to produce indole among the Klebsiella species. Okay? So now, let's go to your gen enterobacters. So your enterobacter, it's also a gram-negative rod. It, habits, it inhabits the soil and water and the large intestine. It is also lactose-fermenting. And your species that cause illness in man are your enterobacter cloaceae, erogenes, agglomerans, jerguvae, uh, Sakazaki, and your Tayloray. Your enterobacter erogenes, wow, ang blurred. Baka kinuha to sa Japan. And then, but basically, no, you can see naman that it is um, gram-negative because it's pink and then um, it, is, it is shaped like a rod. So your antigenic structure, 53 O antigens and 57 H antigens are, have been identified and they are used for the typing of your cloa, Enterobacter cloacea. Uh, the determinants of your pathogenicity, Enterobacter cloacea, causes majority of infections followed by your erogenies and your agglomerans, expresses stan, extended spectrum beta-lactamases, making it resistant to penicillins including your ceph ceftazidime. It produces a potent, a cephalosporinase that inactivates ampicillin and first-gen cephalosporins. O, oh, hindi lang beta-lactamase ang produce niya. In addition, it will also produce cephalosporinases. That's why your first-gen cephalosporins do not work in enterobacter. Clinical significance, it causes nosocomial infection, most, frequent, most frequently associated UTI in debilitated, catheterized, or elderly hospitalized patients. It causes your bacteremia, sepsis, meningitis, and so on. It has also been isolated from patients with tropical sprue. Your tropical sprue is basically mal malabsorption. Mal malabsorption lang yan ng nutrients. So, diagnosis, we tend to use your EMB or in methylene blue. Same lang sila ng ni Klebsiella, but they have uh, pink colonies with central dark purple spot and they are smaller than your Klebsiella. Macon key pink colonies. Triple sugar iron, the result is your acid 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 or A over A with gas production. And then your Invic reaction is minus minus plus plus. For the treatment, um one diba since your your Klebsiella and your enterobacter have the same Invic reaction. So one way to differentiate them is by motility. Okay, remember that your Klebsiella, since it is it is thickly encapsulated, usually encapsulated organisms are not motile. So your Klebsiella is non-motile, your enterobacter is motile. So if you will now test for motility, if we will if you will use uh if you will use semi-solid medium or via wet mount, if it is moving or motile, most probably this is an enterobacter and not Klebsiella. So again, treatment, fluoroquinolones, aminoglycosides are both, piptaz, uh, third or second to third uh, gens of your cephalosporins, and prophylaxis, sterility during procedures and hand washing. Okay, so now let's go to your gen genus Shigella. It is subdivided in four major O antigen zero groups. You have here your, remember the letter uh, because you you should not uh, disarrange them because this is your uh, groups or subdivisions. Or kapag when you say group A, that will pertain to dysentery. So the FBS lang yung mnemonic dyan. Dysentery, flexneri, boydi, and sonay. 
So it it is a major cause of your bacillary dysentery or your shigellosis. So this disease is described to be a severe abdominal cramp, uh, low volume stools with blood and mucus. Your shigella is also known as your inert bacteria. Okay, also yun yung other name niya. And among the four, only Shigella sone is a lactose fermenter. But it is a delayed lactose fermenter. Okay, so you cannot use or you can use ONPG and it will yield a positive result. Okay, so yun yung take away nyo sa Shigella na genus. Si sone lang yung kayang mag uh, ferment ng lactose. So, this is again your Shigella. So, characteristics, it is, it is non-motile, gram-negative, non-lactose fermenter, um, except for Asone. Um, they have clear colonies on EMB and Macon key. They ferment glucose. So, it does not produce gas or H2S on TSI, and the most common disinfectants will kill the organism. Uh, it can survive for more than 6 months in water at room temperature. So the determinants of pathogenicity, that's why it's very important to boil your water because of this information. Determinants of pathogenicity, uh, the O antigen with smooth lipopolysaccharide structure confers the ability to survive the passage through host defenses. So its invasiveness is virtually associated to penetrate mucosa and epithelial cells of the colon by endocytosis it will result in bacterial multiplication in the cytoplasm your shigella your shigella polymerized actin at one pole propelling the bacterium through the cytoplasm and into adjacent cells so yun yung mechanism niya of motility hindi via flagella So this one is the mechanism of action in which your shigella will now cause its disease. So the, the ingested shigella will enter, enter the large intestine and rectal cells by endocytosis. When you say endocytosis, uh, it's cell eating, diba? Or the, the movement of substances into the cell. So ayan. The shigella escape from the endocytic vesicles and multiply inside the cell protected from macrophages. That's why yung macrophages hindi nila kinakain. And then the shigile will invade neighboring cells by what mechanism ito? Polymerized actin at one pole, preparing the bacterium through the cytoplasm in, into the adjacent cells. So, ayan. They will propel themselves from one a cell to another and then a mucosal abscess forms as the cells die, causing diarrhea with blood, mucus, and painful abdominal cramping. That's why yung role ng mga to, yung mga, mga, mga macrophages, they are the ones that will uh, recruit other cells. And if you know, kung magre-recruit yung mga macrophages ng other cells into the, into, the, into the infection site, they will produce mga cytokines and mga interleukins which will induce inflammation. And what will happen if there is inflammation there will be a lot of substances released attributing now to the pus or mucus formation so we also have here your shiga toxin so your shiga toxin is isolated from shigella dysentery type shigella dysentery type 1 and its toxicity results in the development of your hemorrhagic colitis and your hemolytic uremic syndrome the cytotoxic and it is cytotoxic and interferes with protein synthesis. Your shigella multiply in a non-invasive non manner in, a, in the jejunum and produce toxin resulting in activated secretory processes. The toxin blocks absorption of the electrolytes, glucose amino acids into the lumen of the intestine. And the second phase is tissue invasion of the large intestine producing your microvascular damage with bloody diarrhea. If curant jelly sputum si clubshella, si shigella naman ang curant jelly stool. Okay, so that's your curant jelly stool. Okay, clinical significance, si Shigella Sone or your group D causes 80% of all infections followed by your flexnary which has been associated with outbreaks among sexually active men who have sex with men. Your Shigella dysentery causes most serious infection including your HUS that is similar to a HEC. 
and your Shiga disintegrate type 1 produces Shiga toxin which is capable of uh, resulting in your HUS in susceptible individuals. Uh, they are spread by flies, fingers, uh, foods, feces, and water contaminated by infected individuals. They have a low infective dose. If 10 or 100 organisms is 10 to 100 organisms is the ano uh, the population of the organism that is only needed in order for them to cause the infection. Therefore, secondary cases within a household are common, particularly under conditions of crowding or poor sanitation. What this means is that if uh, if a patient has dysentery, most com most probably other family members will also have dysentery. So your bacillary dysentery, it will present initially with fever and water diarrhea and that changes on the second day to frequent small volume stools with blood and mucus. Your severe form will have fevers, chills, convulsions, abdominal cramps, tenesmus. Tenesmus is the feeling that you still need to pass a stool even though you have just passed stool and hindi ka naman talaga natatae. Ah, natatae ka in a sense na wala ka namang maitatae. Ganon. That, that feeling if you have experienced that one. Um... Ayan, isa ito sa mga most common manifestations ng bacillary dysentery, tenesmus, and bloody stools. Uh, mortality is due to dehydration and electrolyte imbalance and most disease is seen in age groups of 1 to 10 years of age. Kasi nga, they are the ones who doesn't have um, much knowledge on hygiene. Not unless parents will educate them or they are properly guided by their guardians. So for the diagnosis, the best specimen is your, your rectal swab of the ulcer. And then fecal by sigmoidoscopy, fecal specimens can also be used. It is placed in a buffered, buffered transport medium since Shigella is sensitive to acids in the material. Your Invic reaction is my negative plus, negative plus, or negative positive, negative positive. And I almost forget, among all of your Shigella, uh, oh, Shigella uh, only your Shigella dysentery will be negative for mannitol. Okay, your uh, Flexneri, Boydi, and Sone, they will all be positive for mannitol. So if you want to isolate dysentery, use mannitol. And then if it is negative, that is uh, Shigella dysentery. Materials can be strict in your Macon key, which will produce white colonies or colorless, uh, which is... Um, indicate which will indicate that it is a non-lactose producing organism. Your EMB, non-colored colonies. Again, that, that is the picture of your Shigella on Makonki and I use in methylene blue. We can also use your, your SSA agar in which they will have a transparent or colorless colonies. The medium suppresses the growth of other enterics and gram positives. It is it will only grow your Salmonella and Shigella, hence the name. And it, we can also use your hecto and enteric agar. Your, your TSI reaction. TSI reaction for Shigella is K over A. Because it is a non-lactose fermenting organism. But it utilizes uh, glucose particularly uh, to, me, to make its um, energy. So that's why it's K over A. Yung na-ferment niya lang is glucose. Ayan o. Without H2S. The H2S will differentiate it from um, salmonella. So treatment, of course, hydration, um, saline solution, amoxicillin, and your ampicillin, drug of choice for sensitive isolates. But if your your Shigella also is producing beta-lactamase, we can use uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Or to those patients who are allergic to penicillin, we can also use, we can also use your azithromycin and your ofloxacin or ciprofloxacin. Prevention, of course, sanitation, um, detection, treatment of carriers, proper sewage disposal, sa lahat na ng mga hygiene-hygiene. Of course, breastfeeding through the first year of life because it will confer... Um, priming of your intestines, the, the intestines of the baby, to resist um, the attachment of this organism. 
Okay, let's go to your genus Salmonella. Your genus Salmonella is also gram-negative with peritrichus flagella, a motile non-lactose fermenter which and also produces your acid and gas during fermentation and they also produce now your hydrogen sulfide. Um, it tolerates a large concentration of bile. That's why the the reservoir for for the carriers is your gallbladder. The O and H antigens are used to serotype Salmonella. All strains affecting humans are grouped in a single species, which is your Salmonella enteritidis, which has approximately 2,500 serotypes or serovars. Your, it has an accepted nomenclature. Example is your uh, Salmonella enterica, subspecies enterica, serotype ty typhimorium, which is shortened to Salmonella typhimorium. So your salmonella serotypes of clinical significance are your paratyphy A, paratyphy B, your cholera suis, your typhi, or your salmonella typhi, which is your serogroup D. So your salmonella serotypes enteritidis and your typhimorium. So the determinants of pathogenicity of your salmonella is, is because of this one facultative it is a facultative intracellular parasite it survives intracellularly by in phagocytes but also has the ability to grow in the extracellular environment survival in macrophages is due to the production of protein that protects against defensins which is an antibacterial substance in the macrophage it also has an o antigenic uh, side chain uh, the vi antigen and your type 1 or manos binding fimbri. So the VI of your salmonella, it's it's also likened to your O antigen or capsular, a K antigen or capsular antigen in which it will um, prevent phagocytosis. The invasiveness is attributed to, its, to the virulent salmonella penetrating the cells of the epithelial lining uh, the organism is carried to the reticuloendothelial system. When we say reticuloendothelial system, those are your uh, spleen, lymph nodes, um, where they will multiply and spread to the other sites. The bowel are reinfected through the liver and gallbladder. Your endotoxins responsible for the fever in the patients. Nga pala no, um, in salmonella, uh, it's a misnomer na tinatawag siyang typhoid fever okay because typhoid fever should be used in rickettsial diseases mainly your um rickettsia typhi the the more appropriate term for the fever that is caused by salmonella is enteric fever and not typhoid fever but since all around the world uh, they associate typhoid fever to, to salmonella they just um accept it okay they just tolerate it but um Technical, uh, theoretically speaking, book-wise, it should be typhoid, uh, enteric fever and not typhoid fever because typhoid fever is the fever that is caused by your rickettsia typhi or endemic typhus. Okay? Yeah. And, your, and the toxin responsible in the fever if the patient cytotoxin associated with the outer bacterial membrane important in cellular invasion and cellular destruction. Again, this is the mechanism of action in which your salmonella will cause its disease. So, ingested salmonella enter the small intestinal cells by endocytosis. And then next, uh, once the salmonella is inside, it will pass through the endothelial cells to the submucosa. So, lalo, when you say submucosa, loloob na siya. Okay? Doon, papasok na siya talaga sa tissues ng intestines where they are taken up by macrophages. Once they are inside the macrophages, it they will, the macrophages will serve as uh, transport vehicles in which they will reach the reticuloendothelial system. And once they reach the reticuloendothelial system, they will multiply and, yeah, multiply and which causes your lymphoid hyperplasia or your hypertrophy. Once there is lymphoid hyperplasia or hypertrophy, you will see mga kulani ninyo or lymphadenopathies. And then they will also re they will now again re-enter the bowel via the liver and your gallbladder causing now your enteric fever and other manifestations. Clinical significance, fecal oral route, 
your salmonella cerebral typhi or salmonella typhi may involve chronic carriers. Remember the story of Typhoid Mary. If you have pet turtles or other amphibians, amphibian bang turtle? Basta ganun. Turtles, uh, pet snakes, if you have a pet crocodile, or mga salamanders, ganun. They have also been implicated as sources of infection because these uh, animals, salmonella typhi, or the genus salmonella, is a part of their norm, normal flora. Um, individuals crowded in institutions may also be involved in salmonella epidemics or outbreaks. So your enteric fever or typhoid fever, again, as I've said a while ago, your typhoid should be used in rickettsia typhi or 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 endemic typhus. It is produced by salmonella typhi. Paratyphi A and B can cause enteric fever, but symptoms are milder and mortality is lower. Ingested from contaminated food and water, the first week we have phases kasi in, in salmonellosis or enteric fever. For the first week, you will most uh, often um, experience lethargy, remittent fever, Okay, when we say remittent fever, diba usually you will hear remittent fever, intermittent fever, relapsing fever, diba ang daming types, no? When you say remittent fever, um, hindi niya nare-reach yung baseline, so it's continuously high. Okay, so bumababa man siya, for example, 39, 40, bumababa man siya, but hindi niya natatouch yung normal values natin, which is 37.5. So continuous lang siyang mataas, although nag-fluctuate sa taas, pero hindi niya nare-reach yung normal value. As compared to your intermittent fever, mataas siya and then it has the possibility to go down even lower than your uh, normal value. So, pwede siya maging, for example, today 39 ka and then mamaya magiging uh, 36.5. So, ganun siya. And then, babalik ulit sa 40. Ganun. So, ganun yung pattern ng intermittent fever. Your relapsing fever naman, continuously mataas and then, magnonormalize within, magnonormalize for 3 to 3 to 5 days. And then after 3 to 5 days, babalik ulit yan sa taas. That's why it's called relapsing. Nagkaka-relapse ka. But in your enteric fever, in the first week, you will have remittent fever. Hindi yan bababa. Bababa pero hindi niya matatouch yung baseline. So technically, you still have fever kahit na bumababa yan. 39, magiging 38, then 37.9 yan. But never niyang matatouch yung 37.5 na normal baseline natin. Um, Malay, body pains, constipation rather than LBM is the rule. Uh, organisms penetrate the intestinal wall, lymphatic system, ingested by monocytes, they're not killed but undergoes multiplication. Second week, it will now enter the bloodstream. Or should I say re-enter the bloodstream. Okay, kasi in first week, it also, in the first week, nasa bloodstream na siya. That's why in the diagnosis, the first the, the best specimen to use if the infection is still on the first week is blood. And then when we, and then kapag nasa second week na siya, the best uh, specimen now is your urine. Okay? So, in the second week, it will re-enter the bloodstream causing a prolonged bacteremia infection of the biliary tree and other organs. Of course, so there is hepatitis and focal necrosis of the liver, inflammation of the gallbladder, periosteum, and the lungs may occur. Your patient is severely ill with sustained fever, tender abdomen with rose spots. Okay, take away this kasi ngayon ko lang nalaman to sa medicine and maybe na-overlook ko to noong nag-aaral pa ako ng medtech. Di ba may mga, may mga clinical manifestations tayo that, is, that are specific to diseases, di ba? Like your complex spots which is for the measles, di ba? And then you have here your... You have also your, ano, yung mga dots nyo sa malaria, yung mga ganun. But I have never encountered the rose spots in salmonella. So, take away nyo dito. Once you see the rose spots, this are, or this is a specific or pathognomonic to your um, salmonellosis or enteric fever. And then you will also have diarrhea begins during second to third week of illness. And then, um... Wait lang. Did I say urine kanina? No, second week should be stool. <laughs> Kasi nga, this one. Diarrhea begins during second week and third week. So, the first week, your be the best specimen is blood. Second week, the best specimen is stool. Okay? So, correction lang. Hindi, hindi urine. 
Okay, and then there's also there is reinfection of in the intestinal tract from the gallbladder and may cause necrosis of the Peyer's patches. Again, what is your Peyer's patches? They are your lymphoid organs that are embedded on the mucosa of your or the submucosa of your um, ileum or small intestine. So yan yung rose spots na sinasabi natin. So it can be mistaken for chicken pox, ganon or other manifestations like your measles, but if you try now to look at it closely as to end and include the manifestations din ng pasyente natin with diarrhea of course those are your rose spots specific for your salmonella and then in your third week the patient is exhausted and still febrile but still febrile ah, because the fever nga in in salmonella will is termed as your remittent so it, but continue to show improvement of no complications of course so complication intestinal perforation severe bleeding cholecystitis pneumonia and abscess your convalescent or chronic carriers are the sole source of the organisms. Majority of chronic carriers are older women with gallbladder disease. And then gastroenteritis, enterocolitis, salmonellosis is caused by cerebars enteritidis and your typhimorium. They are characterized by nausea, vomiting, and develop diarrhea, usually non-bloody, which develop generally within 48 hours of ingesting contaminated food or water, like your poultry and eggs. That's why, it's, that's why if you cook your eggs... Always wash them. Or if you eat eggs, always wash them. To remove your salmonella. So, ayan. Uh, fever and abdominal cramping are common. The disease is generally self-limiting to 48 to 72 hours. Although convalescent carriage of organisms may persist for a month or more. Septicemia, of course, since nasa bloodstream na siya, it causes your septicemia. Uh, the most common cause is your cholera suis. The fever, it will present as fever, chills, anorexia, and anemia. Gastroenteritis is minor. Um, there is early invasion of the bloodstream following oral infection. Focal lesions may develop in any tissue producing osteomyelitis, pneumonia, pulmonary abscess, meningitis, or endocarditis. So this is the clinical diseases induced by your... I PDF to no? <laughs> Okay, natakpan ko yung PowerPoint ko, but sige, uh, let's just take a look at this table. So, the incubation, these are the manifestations of your salmonella. So, you have your enteric fever, septicemia, and your enterocolitis. <coughs> the incubation periods of it are there listed, 7 to 20 days, 8 to 48 hours. Of course, mas, ma mas kaunti yung, or mas shorter yung enterocolitis because it's ingest ingestion yung mode of transmission natin, di ba? Enteric fevers, papasok pa, si, pa kasi siya sa bloodstream. That's why it may take longer. So, onset, insidious. When you say insidious, uh, very gradual lang siya. Subtle yung pag ano niya, yung subtle way. Parang hindi mo nararamdaman. But then, kung mararamdaman mo na, it will have very harmful effects. Or, ramdam na ramdam mo na talaga once na nagparamdam pa na gano'n. Yung insidious. Fever, ayan. Um, for the blood cultures, positive in first week, second weeks of the disease, positive during high fever, yung septicemia. Yun yung rule, ru <laughs> yun yung rule, ah, when you say, when you get blood cultures from any specimens, um, the best time is always at the peak of the fever because that's the time in which the most number of organisms is in your bloodstream. Stool cultures, positive from second week, and then negative in earlier diseases. That's why blood culture yung unang-unang mong kukunin and then stool culture ka the next week or second week. Ayan. Uh, hmm, I stand to be corrected. Pwede pala yung urine. <laughs> okay, urine or stool sa second week actually. Uh, first week, blood culture. And then second to third week, it, we can use urine or stool. For your enterocolitis, stool culture first week. Uh, septicemia blood culture first week. But the best specimen, no, wala dyan. The best specimen, and it can be it can be detected even in first week, second week, or third week, is your bone marrow. But hindi naman, ano, hindi naman necessary na mag bone marrow aspirate. Kasi simple yung ano lang yan, salmonelliosis, mag bone marrow aspirate ka pa ba? Diba? Actually, salmonelliosis can be diagnosed without the use of blood culture, urine culture, stool culture. Just take the history of PA of the patient and the manifestations. Lalo na kung may rosy spots. Salmonella on EMB agar, we, they have gray mucoid colonies. In Makonki, colorless since they are non-lactose fermenters. 
Salmonella and SSA, what differentiates them from your Shigella is that they will produce black centers because of their production of hydrogen sulfide. Hecto and enteric, black centers. Basta black by hydrogen sulfide, Salmonella na yan. Invic reaction, negative negative plus plus, TSI, red slant, yellow butt. Red slant, yellow butt, so that is K over A. So negative gas and then with the production of your H2S. Then we can also use agglutination test. So unknown sera plus your unknown culture, if clumping is seen, that is your positive test. Actually, we do not do this anymore, your, your Vidal's test. The Typhidat test is the one, one um, your Typhidat test is the one that has the principle embedded in your kits, test kits. So, ayan, IgM and IgG, yung dinedetect mo dyan. Again, IgM for acute, um, IgG is for um, past infection. Pag positive sila both, that indicates recent infection. You cannot totally say that Okay, never mind. Uh, for the Widal's test, it detects the rise of antibodies against typhoid during second and third week of thyroid, typhoid infections. That's why it's not commonly used anymore because of this one. Mag, um, you, the detection or the sensitivity of Widal's test um, only rises once you reach your second to third week. So it indicates specifics of first week. Treatment, uncomplicated, chlorampenicol, cotrimoxazole, amoxicillin. If it is severe, signs and symptoms, you may use your ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, and your softriaxone. Okay, so that's it for your genus Salmonella. But before we go here, parang na hindi ko nalagay, one of the agars that we can actually also use for Salmonella is your BSA or bismuth sulfite agar, which is very specific to your Salmonella Typhi. Okay, so let's go to your Yersinia. So, it is a short, pleomorphic, gram-negative. So, you can always pause the video if you get tired since it's already 1 hour 11 minutes long. So, we have a short, it is described to be short, pleomorphic, gram-negative, cocobacilli, facultative, uh, anaerobic, non-motile, exhibits bipolar staining or we term them as your safety pin appearance. So your your senia pestis it causes your plague and then your your senia pseudotuberculosis and enterocolitical they will cause your human diarrheal diseases. So that is your your senia pestis. So I, this is your your senia pestis the causative agent of your plague or black death. So the infection of rodents or an, and occasionally transmitted to uh, humans by the bite of fleas which is your Synopsila chiopsis, or the consumption of your plague-ridden animal carcass. Epidemiology, um, urban plague, rats are the common reservoir. Uh, Sylvatic plug, uh, the plug may be found in the wild where prairie dogs and ground squirrels are most important reservoirs. Your house pets, particularly cows, are allowed to roam in plague uh, enzo enzotic areas and may also become infected. So plague is character characteristically transmitted by fleas and then pneumonic plague uh, that is your plague can also be transmitted by ingestion of contaminated animal tissue or via your, your respiratory tract and then it later occurs either when the organism reaches the lung via bl the bloodstream and establish a secondary pneumonia or following inhalation or exposure to respiratory secretions from a patient or animal with plague pneumonia. So this is the transmission of your of your Yersinia pestis and then its progression. For the pathogenicity, when the flea feeds, the organisms multiply in the gut. Uh, it is the coagulase blocks the proventriculus of the flea so that no food can pass through. The, the hungry flea bites ferociously and blood contaminated by Yersinia pestis is regurgitated into the bite wound. And then, the organisms are phagocytosed. However, the organisms are resistant to intracellular killing and by phagocytes and the organisms multiply in your macrophages, just like your salmonella. The bacteria released from the lysed phagocytes are resistant to subsequent phagocytosis by virtue of their expression of the effector proteins, which is your Y-Ops, into host cells to paralyze them and the PLA protease. 
which is a plasminogen activator that prevents blood clotting, and a proteinaceous uh, capsule or the F1 antigen, which is antiphagocytic. So, yan yung mga ano, reasons in which bakit siya invasive yung F the they're possessing um, y of proteins to paralyze the host cells, mga plasminogen activators, mga capsules, to render them um, an to render them anti-genetic or antiphagocytic abilities and to evade uh, normal host responses. So maybe I'll cut it muna here because it my gadget is becoming low bat. For part 2, we will uh, continue the discussion. So there, let's continue with the genus Yersinia. So the organisms reach the lymphatics, producing your hemorrhagic inflammation or lymph nodes, and your lymph nodes become enlarged or lymphadenitis, necrotic to one, so your, it is termed as your bobo, that's why it's called bobonic plug then. Uh, hematogenous spread of bacteria to other organs or tissues may occur resulting in the additional hemorrhagic lesions at these sites like your meningitis, pneumonia, and your pleuropericarditis. So, ayan, cl clinical manifestations, your bubonic plague or your septicemic plague, um, it, the incubation period is generally 2 to 8 days, sudden high fever, chills, headache, myalgia, weakness that proceeds uh, prost to prostration. When you say prostration, nakikita nyo yung ano kung paano magpray yung mga uh, brothers and sisters nating mga muslim yung the way na nakataas yung pet nila sa sa in the air ganon ganon yung prostration so because of your weakness and your myalgia which is caused by this infection gan, ganon na yung iasyo mong position because of the intense pain so within a short time a characteristic painful bobo develops And then, the bobos uh, typically are located in the growing axilla or neck. Uh, blood pressure generally drops, leading to septic shock. And if it is not treated, it will lead to death. Manifestations include postules, ingestion of contaminated meat or exposure to airborne bacilli, um, pneumonic plague, plague meningitis, just read through these ones. Let's go to the diagnosis. Okay, so for the diagnosis of your Yersinia, uh, gram stain smear is a culture of an aspirate from bobo, CSF, or sputum is used. Uh, gram they are described to be gram-negative bacilli, a single cells, pairs, or chains. They are termed to have a safety pin appearance. And then, we can stain them with the Wason stain, okay? Hindi siya included here yata. Ayan, nandito pala. So blood cultures should be sent to the laboratory immediately. Um, the organisms growth grows on macon key, although they are non-lactose fermenting. It can also be uh, cultivated in the blood agar media, brain heart infusion, and your chocolate agar. So for biochemical reactions, it is catalase positive, indole oxidase, and urease negative. Actually, I have here a mnemonic in which. To differentiate pestis from enterocolitica, okay, your senior pestis and your your senior enterocolitica. So when you say when you say muso, M is for motility, U is for urease, S is for sucrose, and then O is for ornithine. So lahat ng kay pestis negative lahat yan. And then, kapag enterocolitica, positive lahat yan. So, yun yung main difference nila para mapag... In order for you to differentiate your senior pestis from your senior enterocolitica. Okay? Ganun lang kasimple. Always rem... Diba? Moso, it sounds like a mouse, diba? So, ano ba yung mga... Ano yung primary reservoir ng your senior, diba? Mouse or rats. So, yun. Ganun lang pala tandaan nyo dyan. And then we can also use right gems or ways on stain of materials from bobos so to show the safety pin appearance. So serology in activated unvaccinated patients, convalescent uh, serum antibody titer of 1 is to 16 or greater is an evidence of your urinary pestis infection. The titer rise into six sequential specimens to confirm the serologic diagnosis. 
Treatment and control, just read through this one. Ayan, Yersinia enterocolita ka and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. So, these are, gaya nga nang sabi ko kanina, just base it on MOSU in order for you to differentiate enterocolitica from pestis. So, motile, type 3 secretion system and YOP proteins are virulent virulence factors for the avoidance of phagocytosis. They grow well at room temperature and most strains are non-lactose fermenters. So, pathogenesis and clinical significance and common cause of enterocolitis ingestion is by um, or infection is by ingestion. They cause ulcerative uh, lesions. There is fever, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. So, for the diagnosis, we can use your MAPON key or CIN medium or CEF Soludin Ergesan Novobiosin. So, it is a medium selective for your senior, yung CIN. Okay, serologic test for your anti your senior antibodies may assist your diagnosis. Treatment, ciprofloxacin and cotrimoxazole. Okay, now let's go to your genus Proteus. So, there are only two or most frequently isolated pathogens in your genus Proteus, which is your Mirabilis and your Vulgaris. <laughs> Your Mirabilis and Vulgaris, they have antigenic structures uh, like your O, H, and K antigens. Vulgaris strains produces your OX19, OX2, and OXK, which share antigens with your Rickettsia, and these are utilized in the whale felix test for the diagnosis of your Rickettsial infections. Your hydrogen sulfide, with they produce hydrogen sulfide uh, with gas in TSI, urease positive, and then they are non-lactose fermenting. Uh, the difference between your proteus and your salmonella is that the, your salmonella is presents with no gas. Yung proteus natin with gas. Since they are both uh, positive for hydrogen sulfide. Ayan, blurred na naman. Alam nyo na saan galing. And then actively motile at 37 degrees Celsius producing a, producing a translucent sheet of growth on uh, non-selective media like your blood agar plate. So the, they are termed to have a swarming motility. Okay? So your proteus can be distinguished from other enterics by their ability to produce phenylalanine deaminase. Remember the organisms I told you before who are phenylalanine deaminase positive. Or PPMs, diba? Proteus, Providentia, and Morganella. So that is the swarming motility that we can see. As you can see here, diba? Um, halos na cover na niya yung buong slide. Parang walang tumubo. But actually, lahat yan, that's the growth of Proteus. Okay? Kita nyo, oh, in swinab lang yan ng cotton is daming natanggal. So, yan yung swarming motility na sinasabi natin. So, clinical infection, your Proteus mirabilis accounts for the majority of human infections in this group. Second leading cause of your community-acquired UTI and a major cause of nosocomial infections. UTI is characterized by your alkaline pH, diba? as, you can, as you have seen in your case study, due to the production of your urease. The increase in pH causes precipitation of your calcium and magnesium salts, which will result in the formation of infected estrovite stones or your triple phosphate ion stones. So in line of line infections or you can see it in your IV lines, bacteremia and your sepsis. Treatment, Proteus mirabilis is sensitive still to ampicillin and cephalosporins uh, but they are resistant to tetracyclines. Okay, let's go now to your Genocitrobacter. Uh, your Genocitrobacter is isolated from the environment, feces of man and animals implicated in a wide variety of human infections or UTI to from UTI to neonatal meningitis. Taxonomy, you can have here your Citrobacter frundi, uh, diversus, and amalunaticus. Uh, it, they possess your O, H, and K antigens. Some possess the VI antigens of Salmonella, which also confers their antiphagocytic ability, and they are also H2S positive. Clinical infection, majority are caused by your Citrobacter diversus, and they can also cause your urinary tract infection. So, you can also have here your enterotoxigenic form of your Citrobacter frundi, which causes now your diarrhea. So, treatment, aminoglycosides, cetracycline, chlorampenicol. Okay. And now, let's go to your... Kung kita nyo, parang konti na lang yung mga descriptions because these are your minor members of your enterobacteria. Yung mga non... Um, hindi sila yung mga most common na na-isolate natin. So, you have here your serratia. 
Your sriracha is distributed in the soil and water associated with a large number of plants and animals. Majority of human disease is caused by your sriracha mersasens. Uh, your biochemical and other characteristics, they produce your extracellular, extracellular deoxyribonucleotidase, DNA is positive. Again, that is one of its uh, characteristic. Kapag nakakita kayo ng DNA is positive dyan, always think of your sriracha as well as your lipase and your gelatinase. Resistant to callistin and cephalotin, uh, the ONH antigens are important in epidemiologic um, studies. The clinical manifestations, almost all sriracha infections are associated with underlying disease, uh, immunosuppressive treatments, or mechanical manipulation of the patient. So if the patient is on intub if they are intubated or in the ICU or they have uh, immunodeficiency syndromes or diseases, they are susceptible to sriracha infections. 90% are hospital acquired. Um, Marcesens is the most commonly isolated species. The UTI, they can cause nosocomial outbreaks of UTI infections, pneumonia, and septicemia. And then contaminated respiratory equipments like in your in your uh, mechanical ventilators, catheters, maganyan. Uh, treatments, amikacin, gentamicin, chloramphenicol, ciprofloxacin, cotrimoxazone. Ayan. So, your serasha also kaya, oh wait lang. Your serasha also produces your red pigment prodigusin. So, that is one of its typical characteristics. And then, um, it is also implicated in some of your blood bag contaminations in your blood bag. Specifically, your serasha uh, liquefactions. So, yun lang naman. So that's the end of my lecture in Enterobacteria Shea. So if you have any questions, if you are asking, asan yung mga iba sina Providencia? Well, they are just minor. Uh, just read on them sa mga uh, books ninyo. Okay? I will lift questions from this PowerPoint presentation as well as in your books. Okay? So it's a mixture kung saan kuman sila pupunan. Okay, so I just discussed yung mga most common and yung mga must knows ninyo regarding the Enterobacteria Shea family. So again, stay safe and thank you for watching my lecture video. I hope you learned something or kahit na-refresh na man kayo. Thank you.